And welcome to another episode here on Du'a's Digging Deeper, where we continue our exploration of the Du'a that we recite in Shah Ramadan after our obligatory prayers, starting with Allahumma adkhil ala ahli al-qubur al-surur. And we are using the amazing commentary in the book Manifestations of the All-Merciful by Shaykh Khalfan to guide us through this dua. And as I've mentioned in the introduction and in the previous sessions, that if you do want to jump ahead and you do want to read on, you absolutely can. And the book is available, uh, widely available online, especially on al-islam.org, uh, where you'll be able to find it. Inshallah, today's session, we'll be looking at the next line of the dua, starting with Allahumma ksukulla uryan. Allahumma ksukulla uryan. O oh Allah, clothe every unclothed one. Now again, and you're going to get fed up with me saying this, but actually on the surface level of this, there's not much more to it. That means the eye. O oh Allah, for those who do not have clothing and the decency of clothing, then inshallah you can grant it to them. And we'll probably typically go straight on to the next line of the du'a. But as is the goal, we want to dig deeper and dive deeper into what is actually this line about. Why is this line in this du'a something that sounds so simple, yet it must have a further meaning. So, to try and dissect this and to try and begin our discussion, the first question is, what is the goal of clothing? Oh Allah, clothe every unclothed one. What is the goal of clothing? By answering this, we'll actually be able to open up our discussion and the dimension that we want to now view this through. So, the goal of clothing, ultimately it's a basic necessity of life. It's something that everyone needs uh, in different materials, colour, size, whatever. But it has two fundamental goals. And if we look to the Qur'an, we can see these. And we don't have to look to the Qur'an to understand them, but it's nice that we have the reference to it. So, we can look to the Qur'an in Surah Al-A'raf, and then we can look to a hadith from Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al-Kadhim alayhi salam. So let's start with Surah Al-A'raf, Surah number 7, verse 26. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya Bani Adam, O children of Adam, surely we have sent down for you clothing that covers your shame and an attire that causes beauty and the attire of piety that is better. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here mentioned two explicit goals of Clothing. Number one, it covers your shame. And secondly, it's an attire that causes beauty. Imam Muslim al-Ja'far al-Kadhim is reported to have said that whenever a person would like to put on a new dress, he should wipe his hand over it and say, praise belongs to Allah who clothed me with what I cover my shame and beautify myself among the people. Again, we see cover my shame and beautifying myself. Therefore, simply put, clothing has two goals. Number one, to uh, have a level of haya and modesty, to cover oneself, um, to cover one's body, uh, and secondly, to beautify oneself. So it's a protection and also uh, to beautify. Fine. Now we've understood this, let's go into this line from a different angle. Oh Allah, clothe every unclothed one. So I myself, alhamdulillah, have clothes. Inshallah, they fulfill those two purposes. But now I want to go further. And I'm going to say, let's understand the inner clothing. This is the outward. It is semi-nice, it's beautiful, maybe. Uh, it covers me in the correct way. Now let's go inside. So, how can we understand this? We, of course, know that the human, that we as creations, as humans, are not just composed of an outward and physical nature. We have an inward nature as well, our soul and etc. And this internal body, if you like, this internal existence of ourselves has even more significance and is more significant than 
our outward. We know that when we get buried into the ground, this becomes nothing more to most of us. And the only thing that remains is the soul that then journeys into the Akhirah. So the question then becomes, with the first goal of clothing, what is the thing we are concealing with this clothing? The clothing for the outward is concealing our body. And the question is, on the inside, what is the thing that it's concealing? What is the shame it's trying to conceal? And when we look to Surah Al-Tariq in Surah 86, verse number 9, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, The day when the secrets shall be made manifest. The secrets, the things we're ashamed of. The things that we don't want anyone to know about. The things that are private to us. These are the things that will be made the day when the secrets shall be made manifest. When they'll be exposed. And these are the things that we need to be covering. The secrets, our secrets, perhaps our sins, the things we don't know want anyone to know about. Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. And we say in many du'as, oh Allah, please cover up my sins and my vices and don't make them public to the world. But there will be a day when those secrets shall be made manifest. So we're asking Allah to cover our shamefulness, to cover our sins. It's Allah's mercy that can enable that to be covered. You can almost see it as a way that we must be spiritually clothed. Whilst we're physically clothed, we must also be spiritually clothed. And if we're not, if we're spiritually unclothed, we must react. And to do that, the reaction needs to be to seek this divine intervention. We must seek to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to clothe us internally, to cover up our sins and our vices, to eradicate them hopefully, but to cover them up as well. And by doing this, it helps us establish taqwa, which we discussed in one of the previous sessions and I recommend you to have a watch of that different of that discussion around a uh, maybe perhaps a different angle of taqwa that we've uh, that you've not heard of before it's a big topic fine so we understand that clothing has two goals number one is to cover up our body and our, our, our shame and secondly it's to beautify oneself and we've just turned it on his head and we said the inward clothing the thing we want to be protected from is our shame of our sins our inward sins we don't want anyone to know about so what about the second application of clothing the beautifying oneself what is the inward version of this and as we said the the goal is of beautification is there for clothing however we must of course observe this with a boundary, with sharia boundaries, we must not overdress to the point where it attracts the wrong attention <clears throat> and for the wrong reasons. And it's important for us maybe just to go on a bit of a, a side discussion, <clears throat> which is that if this happens, if we do dress ourselves with the goal of beautifying for the sake of others that we shouldn't be doing it for, this goes against the overall goal, our overall goal in life. Which prompts quite a nice discussion around what is the goal of life? What is it that we're actually trying to do? And ironically, in life, especially nowadays with, with, with our generation, I guess we could say, we want to know the goal behind everything. We want to know the why behind everything. Now, oh, you need to eat this. Why? I need to know why before I do it. Once upon a time, people would be told, you know, this is what you need to do. And that's it. They would follow 100%. But nowadays, the millennial generation, our generation, are very much more inquisitive. We want to know why before we do anything. I want proof before I have any chance of doing it. So, ironically, we don't even ask ourselves, or many in the world don't actually know if you were to go and ask them, what is the goal of life? You want to know the goal of your work, of this, of that, but what is the goal of life? And they will be a little bit, you know, perplexed. No one will have a consistent answer. Even maybe some will have no answers at all. And I think we've neglected our understanding behind our goal. Especially, and we're just coming back to this point, when we're clothing ourselves to beautify ourselves for reasons that go against our goal. That's a sign that maybe we don't really understand the goal in its truest essence. And it's important to note that by not knowing the goal, man will always face difficulties. 
What do I mean by that? What we mean by this is that some will say, oh, my golden life is to become successful. Okay, define successful. And they may say, oh, you know, I want to have loads of cash. Okay, fine. Let's, let's take that. Let's assume that that could be a legitimate goal in life. Let's go and ask those who have earned uh, reasonable money and wealth and ask them, have you ever faced difficulties? And I'm certain, unless they're lying, they'll say, yes, of course I have. Money doesn't solve difficulties. So that can't be the goal of life. We need to understand what is the goal of life. And we have answers to the goal of life from Quran and Hadith. And this will take us on, on a bit of a journey. And firstly, we look to chapter 51, verse 56. In the very famous verse, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ And I've not created the jinn and men except that they should worship me. Now, most people would go, okay, cool. Now I know the goal in life is to worship Allah. Actually, if you look carefully, this is giving us the aim. The aim is indicated as worshipping Allah. That you and I as creations, our aim should be to worship Allah. What is the result of worshipping Allah? And this is where we go to Surah 15 and verse 99. And worship your Lord until conviction comes to you. So we're told, worship, that is the goal, that is the direction, that is what we should do. And by doing so, and worship your Lord, until until conviction comes to you. So actually we understand that the global goal, that the end goal is ma'rifah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's having this conviction, this understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is the end goal. The closer one gets to his Lord, the better the knowledge of his creator. And it's an unlimited thing. You then have more yearning to understand the unlimited. And we live in this material world whereby we are given things like clothing, things like food, things like uh, halal drinks, things like uh, you know, housing, shelter, all of these things. We're given these materialistic things for us to use so that we can get to our ultimate goal, which is ma'rif of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. However, however, nowadays what we know we're going through is that people's goals are becoming the materialistic things themselves rather than being a means to the ultimate goal. And people then see that when they get attached to those materialistic things, they don't feel a level of satisfaction. Whereas those who detach from those and use them as a means to their final goal, which is ma'rif of Allah, they have a level of satisfaction and happiness and serenity that none others can understand or begin to appreciate. So coming back to what we mentioned, we were talking about oh Allah clothed all of the unclothed. We said that the goal of clothing is twofold. Number one, to protect and cover our shame. And secondly, for us to beautify ourselves. And then we said, but what if you beautify yourself and it goes against the sharia? It goes against what we are allowed and it draws the wrong attention. Well, actually, that goes against our global goal in life. We then have now zoomed into the goal in life. So let's come back and say, okay, what is the inner beautification? What is it? And this is a very short answer, which is that the same way that taqwa, as we mentioned in the previous session, is one's protection from vice and evil. And it's important we go back to the understanding of taqwa. So please, please revisit that clip if you can. It's a source of protection against evil and vice. The same way it's also a level of embellishment. Taqwa is a source of embellishment, of beautification as well. It embellishes the inner form of the human being. It beautifies the inner form, the inner self. It, le it lets you become excellent with your character and it makes this creation a beloved one of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who are you trying to beautify? So this is a beautiful way to put it. Who are you trying, when you put on your clothes, let's say you're doing it for the wrong reasons, you're trying to beautify yourself for the sake of someone else to be attracted to you, right? And we're saying that's the wrong way to do it, right? Taking that same premise that 
If you beautify yourself with your clothes, there's a reason, there's something you're trying to attract. You're trying to get attention from. Similarly, when you beautify your inner self, who are you trying to attract? You're trying to attract the attention of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you dress yourself up in taqwa. Such that you become the beloved of Allah. Allah is attracted towards that creation of His. It's a beautiful way to see it. So as a summary, we said that clothing has two purposes. To cover oneself and cover one's shame and also to beautify. And when we apply these two principles to the inner self, we then understand we need to protect our souls, number one. We need to ask Allah to protect and hide our vices and our shame, our inner shame, which is our sins, and to wipe them ideally, but if not, to cover them and not to reveal them on the day of judgment. And secondly, that we saw that beautying, beautifying ourselves from an inward perspective is attractive. It's a way of attractiveness to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we become a humbled human, that we become a humbled and attractive creation to Him. And then we mentioned this Really important point about the fine line between beautifying oneself with clothing and this going against the greater goal, which led us to the discussion in the middle around what is the greater goal. And we concluded that, of course, we're given the direction and we have we have not created man or jinn, except that you should worship. And we have not created the jinn and men except that they should worship me. And this gave us the direct, this gave us what we should do, except that we should worship me. And however, the outcome of that, وَعْبُدُ رَبِّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ And worship your Lord until conviction comes to you. The global goal at the end of the day is to have this conviction in Allah, this ma'rifah of Allah, this nearness to Allah, qurbatan in Allah, qurba ilahi. This is the ultimate goal for us. So when we recite this line of the du'a, Allahumma ksum kulla uriyana, oh Allah clothe everyone, clothe one. Reflect and think, O oh Allah, cover my inner vices. Cover them. And equally, O oh Allah, allow me to beautify myself. Help me beautify myself towards you by having taqwa. Inshallah, join us for the next session on this incredible du'a. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.